Do you ever feel like you just don't know what you're doing with your life? Can I tell you something random? I don't even know if I'm gonna put this in the vlog. I actually applied to acting school. <laughs> Yesterday, <laughs> I booked a viewing in Cardiff. I'm gonna cry. And this is how, this is how I was much, how much I was like, this is not what I wanna do in my life. Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so this vlog is from July. Sorry that it's taken me so long to edit, but I feel like it's quite crucial in the story of my life right now. So at this point in the story, I just received a job in Essex and I was super excited for it. I'd given my landlord my one month notice to move out of the amazing mansion that I was living in. But then like halfway through this vlog, I received an email saying that the job I had applied for had been changed. And I was like, no, I'm not moving country for a job I didn't apply for. And so I applied to acting school instead and I know that seems pretty random it is as random as it sounds um, but we'll start off before my impending breakdown when I was blissfully unaware making some brunch a super healthy brunch enjoy the story of my life love you so much good morning beautiful people welcome back to my channel thanks for clicking on another video I thought that I would just pull out the vlog camera today it's gonna be a fairly busy day but I wanted to start and um, I've not like you know just woken up like 10 minutes ago um, and I wanted to start by showing you some stuff I bought so have you guys ever been to H&M home it is like the best homeware section ever like every time I go to H&M I walk around the homeware section and I just look and I dream I think H&M and Oliver bonus if I had a house to like kit out it would be full of stuff from H&M and Oliver bonus but yeah the other day or yesterday to be precise I just said you know what screw it Sarah you deserve it get get the stuff that you want you know and I told myself that it would mean that I posted more recipes because they would look cute I don't know if that's true we'll see but I basically got this little um tray and napkins that I will never use but that will sit there as like a photo gimmick you know when you take their Instagram shot also got some bowls so I got this like map black bowl which I think is just gonna look super cute when you've got like some green in there some white you know just the contrast so I've got that then got a bit of a more artistic bowl so it's got the slight taint around the rim it's a bit asymmetric I just think that's gorgeous I think that's beautiful that'll be so good for like breakfast bowls and then probably my fave because if you could feel this oh my gosh that is a dense, a dense material. What material even is it? Oh wait, not dishwasher safe, dude. Okay, I feel like that's gonna have to change. Um, but it is beautiful, it is just gorgeous. And I am so excited to like put some noodles in here, maybe some fur. This one I didn't like love, love, but I thought that actually um, I wanna get more color into my life. I've been living on neutrals for a while now, but honestly, since I've changed my hair color, <laughs> Since my hair is no longer blonde, I feel like I need some other kind of pop in my life. So I got this <laughs> navy blue plate. <laughs> oh my God, sometimes I think if 16 year old Sarah could see me now, she'd be like, why, why are you so excited over a plate? Actually, that's not true. I've always loved crockery. I've always loved crockery. I've always loved mugs specifically. I love mugs, but I always have to put the disclaimer out there that like, don't buy me a mug unless you know it's one that I love because I'm also really fussy. Um, and there are some mugs that um, people like and I'm just like, you're mad, you're mad. That is not a huggable cup. That is not a huggable mug. It doesn't love you back. Also mugs with text on them that tell you what to do. Don't tell me what to do, inanimate object. Have a great day. What if I, what if I don't want to? What if I don't want to have a great day? So yeah, that's my brief summary on my thoughts on mugs. How cute does that look? Can you imagine if that was like filled with like goodness and it would just be like, ping snap on the grid maybe with like a hand in the shot you know something else that i got which i'm really excited to try is some uh, matcha um i've been seeing it everywhere i've been seeing matcha everywhere and um i thought i'd give it a go so i just got this from tesco's do you want to know a fun fact as amazing as this kitchen is i don't love vlogging in it i feel like it's just there's just so much going on there's always loads of stuff on the side i also got a um nutri bullet um if you follow me on instagram you've seen on my stories i got a nutri bullet and i just love it like i've been having healthy slush puppies every day when i say healthy slush puppies that is essentially um fruit and water frozen fruit and water blended up together got my little bit of matcha in there and i'm gonna add in some milk 
Oh, that's going green already. I feel like that should be enough. I don't need that much of it, I don't think. the world's prettiest thing, let's be honest. Yeah, let's see what it tastes like. That's very leafy. Honestly, I imagine that this is an acquired taste. I can see myself acquiring it um, because it, it's not bad. It's like kind of refreshing, but it tastes like I'm eating the green tea bag. You know the tea bag? Have you ever sucked a tea bag before? That's what it tastes like. <laughs> not even exaggerating it. It literally tastes like if you sucked a tea bag. Which I've done like several times in my life, I don't know why. I feel like if there was sweetener in this, if it was like, if there was some honey in this, it would be really bomb. Um, but by itself, I think that's gonna be like a, an acquired taste. But that's also what I said about coffee the first time I had it, and now I'm like, mm, give me that good stuff, so. <laughs> I'm wearing this, by the way, because it means that I'm more likely to actually film day 12 of glow up. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I find that if, as soon as I get up in the morning, I just put on the clothes that I need for the first thing I have to do that day, and um, it's much better. But I've not actually started the day yet. Um, I'm going to go upstairs now and do my quiet time, read my Bible, pray, do my affirmations, which I just, I just love. It just makes me feel so much better. Reminding yourself to say the things that you believe or want to believe about yourself, it really helps. Like, I'm such a fan of affirmations. I know that some people think that affirmations are just a load of rubbish, but I really like them. Um, I kind of fell off them and stopped doing them for a little while just because life has been busy. Um, but I've restarted now and it is so good Like to say things like, I am loved, I am blessed, I am excellent. Most of the day I go through the day saying bad things about myself in my own head. I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot, oh, I'm so stupid, why did I say that, oh, I'm too much, or blah, 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 blah. And so to have that, like, 10 minutes in the morning or even five minutes in the morning where I just say good things I think it is really encouraging and it just lifts my soul and helps me to like give myself the benefit of the doubt you know the way that I do for others so yeah I'm really enjoying doing my morning affirmations and my gratitude my gratitude journal um, and just like reading my bible and praying oh it is literally green tea powder yeah that explains why it tastes like a tea bag <laughs> <laughs> all right then let's start the day Affirmations, let's go. If I could give you one rule in life, it is to always refill the ice tray. You take an ice cube, even if it's just one, you refill it. That is how you win at summer. You're welcome. I thought I'd make some breakfast. So what I've got here is some Greek yogurt. I've also got like a teaspoon, half a teaspoon of matcha powder. Um, because I just think it looks really pretty, to be completely honest. I know that I'm supposed to say, oh, the health benefits, but honestly, it's because it looks pretty. Um, my diet is already fairly healthy. And what I think I'm gonna do is add a bit of honey and stir it in as well. Like, look how pretty that is. I just don't think I need to suffer in order to eat a healthy diet. Like, a teaspoon of honey is not gonna, like, ruin this meal. So I'll mix that in. I'm going to add in some doji berries and some raspberries and just a few chia seeds as well. Then we've got some crushed pistachios to go on as well. I'm also going to use some fuel granola. Top it up with a Drizzle of honey. Et voila, breakfast is served. It's time to dig in. I'm really excited to try this. It looks so pretty, almost too pretty to eat, um, but we'll see how it tastes. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, there's a lot going on there. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm going to be honest with you, I never normally make bowls like this because for my personal taste buds, there's a lot going on there and I just, I just don't need that many textures and flavours, like it's just a lot. Um, that said, 
it is nice because I only put in stuff that I like. However, I didn't because I put in raspberries. I don't really like raspberries. I find them unreliable and these ones are unreliable. They're quite sour. So I would have this again, but I would probably put blueberries in or strawberries or something that I know that I'll like because the raspberries are really coming at me. Let me try it without the raspberries. Let me try it with just some granola. I like it. I just don't like the raspberries. They're too sour. But other than that, it's good. That was actually delicious. Um, I just crushed up the raspberries, added a little bit more honey um, to offset the sourness and it was really good. I think I'm going to eat that like regularly. That was really nice. So yeah. <laughs> and so later that day, I opened my email to find that the wonderful job I had applied to was not what I had been promised. In the words of the employer, the job advertisement had a typing mistake and it was a job in acute medicine, AMU, instead of emergency medicine, A&E. Now while these might sound similar, I assure you these are very different jobs. I already had around three years of experience in acute medicine at this point, and the A&E rotation had been the main pulling point of the job I had applied for. If it hadn't offered A&E, I would have never have chosen to leave Cardiff for Essex, so I panicked. I felt sad and annoyed and a little bit conned, to be honest. I mean, this is my life and you don't just get to change stuff at the last minute. So I booked a flat viewing in Cardiff and filled out an application form for acting school. Now, it might seem random, but I've always wanted to be an actor. And I guess in that moment of panic, that's exactly what I did. So. Here I am, the morning after, the night before, coming to terms with the fact that I've kind of just chosen to stay in Cardiff. Today I actually have a flat viewing booked at 11 o'clock, which is just silly because it is a flat in Cardiff and obviously my job is in Essex. Um, but yesterday, when they said to me, no, your job should be acute medicine, um, and they sent me a rotor for acute medicine despite me having applied and received a job for emergency medicine I kind of panicked and I was like not even panicked I think I just had like a whole like flap of like I'm not doing this this is not happening <laughs> I literally was like yeah I'm not I'm not doing another four months of acute medicine for no reason um, and I started thinking about other options <laughs> of what I could do because I still need to move out from here in August um, so at work, to be honest, they've offered me a job to stay on, um, so I could just stay. Um, so I booked a flat viewing in Cardiff, but now that I've slept on it, I feel like sleep is good. Sleep is good for the soul. Now that I've slept on it, um, I think that I should probably do the job either way. I hope that they give me the job that they offered and that I applied for. Um, I think I should do it either way. Um, so I should probably cancel the viewing at 11 in order not to waste my own time and waste their time. I spoke to my dad about everything, about the job potentially not being what they offered me. And he was like, like, just be grateful, be grateful and, you know, see it as a temporary thing that a full-time medicine, full-time medicine training work is just temporary until you qualify as a GP and then you can do less than full-time and stuff. Um, and I think, yeah, there's a lot of wisdom in what he's saying. But I don't know, sometimes I find it difficult to make decisions about life because I feel like often people give you decision, give you advice that is more aligned with the way that they would live their life and what they want. So I don't mean my dad, I mean just everyone in general. Um, and so you do have to think, okay, that is wise advice, but it is, lead, it is wise for this situation. It's leading me to that situation. And is that situation what I want for my life? And And sometimes I think like, I absolutely love my job, don't get me wrong, I love being a doctor, but oh my goodness, like, the way it works here in the UK, working full-time in the NHS, um, what what doctors across the country give um, and what they get back, I think is a really interesting balance because there are so many hours, so many hours, it can be a really stressful job and just because they say something's 9 to 5, it doesn't mean it's 9 to 5, it can be like 9 to 7. And like, this is going to sound really controversial, I don't even, I, I might edit this out, but like, 
I don't even believe in Monday to Friday, nine to five. Like, I don't know who decided that that was a good life balance. Um, I read a tweet that was saying that, oh, if you're struggling with nine to five, Monday to Friday, that's because it was designed for a man in the 1950s <laughs> who had a wife at home doing his cooking and cleaning and laundry and maintaining his home life. Um, so yeah, for me, I'm like, I'm a big believer in like four day work weeks or three day work weeks. And not from a point of laziness, just from a point of like life balance in terms of like being able to sleep enough, being able to rest and recover enough, being able to pursue um, other hobbies and interests that will help you continue to develop as a person. So then when you go from nine to five to like full time medical work, when you've got the night shifts and the on calls, um, I find that really challenging. I know that during my F1 year, I was just having migraines all the time. I was really sleep deprived. I found it really tough. But yeah, but at the same time, like obviously <laughs> I know it's needed. <laughs> like I, I'm happy to do on calls. I'm happy to do nights. Um, I just, I want more rest in between, I guess. And when they sent me my rota, I really did feel like, here we go again. No longer a locum doctor back into it. And I'm excited in some ways. I'm excited to get back into training, but it's just like, who's like who said that that was an appropriate rest v work balance but anyway i'm ranting i should be reading and praying so i'm gonna do that see you in a bit i'm gonna make some breakfast now i say make some breakfast um i prepped some pancakes the other day so i've got some banana pancakes here no sugar just banana um as the sugar replacement bit of vanilla essence so I'm going to heat those up in the microwave, but a topping that I love is some pecans. So pecans, is that how you say it? I don't know, I've never been able to say that word properly. So I've got a tray by here and I'm just going to add these uh, pecan nuts to the tray. It's just a few of them. I'm going to use some fry light spray just to spritz them if I've got any left, that is. I'm going to add some cinnamon, so sprinkle that over couple sprinkles of salt and some honey and then what I'm going to do is just move them all about so they're all kind of equally covered and then lay them out so they're flat again on the baking paper I'm going to pop those in the oven at 200 degrees for about five minutes while those are doing their thing in the oven I'm going to grab a load of frozen blueberries. If you've been watching this channel or my Instagram for any length of time, you'll know that I love frozen fruit. It makes such a good topping. Got some frozen berries in there. Ping them in the microwave and they make the best sweet compote or topping. Is that how you say the word compote? Oh my gosh, why am I like this? breakfast for the day I love just taking a little bit more time when I have a day off work and just really enjoying breakfast I feel like breakfast is my favorite meal of the day when I'm able to have it in a relaxed manner with plenty of time this by the way is super delicious highly recommend it and um, I did post the recipe for the pancakes and for everything um, over on my Instagram so if you want it all written out then go check out my Instagram at Dr Sarah O'Tung um, and you'll be able to find it Oh, I'm excited to eat this. Maybe I'm lost, wandering alone in the moonlight. One thing that I'm really going to miss about living here will be just having breakfast with the trees and the fresh air and the sound of birds tweeting. Although, you know, you never know, I might have that in my next place too. Yeah, we'll see. Roasted pecans or pecans are the best thing. They're so good. Absolutely worth the extra five to ten minutes.
like to brush my teeth after breakfast. I know some people brush it before, but I don't get it. How can you eat with so much mint in your mouth and then afterwards then all the food is just gonna sit there? So, Sensodyne after breakfast. <laughs> that I learned from the OG of YouTubers, Andrew's Choice, is to always brush your lips. So it makes them really nice and like soft, removes all the dead skin and makes them a little bit pink. So, so I'll rinse my toothbrush, there's no toothpaste on this. I will need some time alone. It's gonna be forever, but when we're together. Okay, so I have showered, um, moisturized, got undressed, finished reading my Bible and praying, and I'm just getting ready in quite a rush actually. <laughs> Normally, when I get ready, I would listen to an audiobook, um, but obviously today I'm vlogging, so talking to you guys instead. The audiobook I'm currently listening to is called Indistractable. This is my fourth time listening to that audiobook on some sun cream always wear sun cream uh, my fourth time listening to that audiobook and i love it i checked my email and the email from the new hospital that i'm supposed to be working out says that no this job is definitely for acute medicine thank you and i'm like no it's not because you listed it as emergency medicine which is a e so i just replied being like please sort that out like that is the job i applied for i feel like i'm just gonna keep my options open and actually view this place because depending on their response if they are super difficult and they don't give me my job i genuinely might not take the job and that sounds ridiculous because honestly like at this point i should probably just do f2 and get it out of the way um but yeah i'll just pray about it and see how i feel um because i don't know i just feel like if you take the well-known path you'll get the well-known results if you don't, you might get something different. You might get something worse as well, but worth finding out. I'm only 27. It's not like I'm three kids to feed. I guess the main person who will be affected is me. And so as long as I'm making decisions that I feel are the correct ones for me, or that I feel like right about in my spirit, then that's fine. Um, so I'm just gonna do some super quick makeup to head out of this house for this viewing. I keep just like refreshing my page to see if I've got an email. It just bothers me. Because if you want a job for AMU, that's fine. Just list it as AMU, Acute Medical Unit. If you want a job for emergency medicine, list it as emergency medicine. But to try and pass one off as the other, I think is very misleading. I already have three years of experience in AMU. I really don't want any more. Do you know what, that's kind of all I have to say. So I'm gonna finish getting ready while listening to my audio, but. My content immediately or letting it clog up my web. I am currently listening on speed 1.55. Browser with a new habit of saving the articles for consumption at a later Kinda time. Slow for with the behavior, my temptation to digest the content wasn't thwarted. Scientists believe this wasted time and decreased proficiency occurred because of Okay, so I'm pretty much ready to go. This is the outfit that I'm gonna wear. It's pretty casual, just jeans, some slightly heeled sandals about the top, and um, this coat, which I, or coat, I don't even know what to call it, trench coat maybe. Um, it's super lightweight, and I love the color, it's so summery. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go, because I need to be there in 20 minutes. It's only 10 minutes away, but I'm trying to be more punctual these days. I love this bag, by the way. I got it from Ted Baker a little while ago after I was tired of my cheap bags falling apart and decided I would never buy a bag that wasn't like leather or slightly expensive again. I mean, this one wasn't crazy expensive. I don't know how. I'm not quite in that financial bracket where people spend thousands on bags. This one's like 170 maybe. I do absolutely love my new car. It's so much easier than walking and public transport and catching Ubers everywhere. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to carry on listening to the audiobook in the car. If I just turn that up. Apple and Google are also joining the crusade against the by adding effort packages to their operating <laughs> systems. Apple's iTunes that provide similar functionality. 
it's like our long weekend while on the phone with a friend. There's not enough space. To our colleagues that we were slacking off. You can go in, in there. It's huge. It's, it's much bigger. You can see what we're scrolling through. It's much bigger. While at the office, so the privacy of our screens, the social pressure to stay on task oh disappears. Oh my god. The problem becomes more acute when we work remotely. Um, Since I tend to work from home, so I find it only too easy to get off space. track when I know I should be writing. Probably a Perhaps terrible bringing driver. back a bit of social pressure when I'm having trouble staying focused could be helpful. I put the question to the test and asked my friend Taylor, a fellow author, to co-work with me. Most mornings, we sat at adjacent desks in my home office and agreed to work in time. You've got lots of minutes. Minutes. <laughs> Seeing him hard at work, particularly at times when I found myself losing steam, <laughs> and knowing that he could see me, kept me doing the work <laughs> I knew I needed to do. Scheduling time with a friend for focused work proved to be an effective way to commit to doing what mattered most. What if you can't find a... <laughs> she just called me an idiot. She goes, you saw me coming, you idiot. And I was like, hen, there were two lanes here. We were both equally on the way down. There was a massive space she could have gone into, but a much smaller space I had to go into. But um, I think she was probably just a bad driver. And she probably just knew that if she went into that space, she couldn't get out of it. So that's fine, but no need to. I just don't think there's any need to be abusive. I think if you're a bad driver, own it. Just say, sorry, I can't fit in there. That's fine. But don't shout at someone and call them an idiot. I find with stuff like that, like I used to let it get to me. Like when someone would be rude, I'd be like, oh, um, and just really stressed about it. And I actually saw a really good um, meme or Instagram post about this saying how you shouldn't let one moment colour your day. And it's like a sheet of yellow. I don't know if I'll even be able to find this. I don't think I saved it. And then they have literally like one pink moment and they get really stressed about it and let the rest of the day be pink. And it's like, no, have a little pink moment and then go back to yellow. So for me, with stuff like that, I don't worry about it because I just know that, you know, for someone to shout at you, for someone to literally have a go at you in a way that is unnecessary and rude and just really like off color, you know, not yellow at all, um, they must be having a really bad day. They must be really stressed or they must be upset or maybe they're just a mean person and that's how they go about their life. But either way, that's it's not me. I'm not stressed. You know, I've got stressful situations in my life right now, but I'm not upset. Um, I'm not a mean person, so I'm not going to let it bother me. And God bless her. I hope that she has a better day. I um, hope she learns how to pull into a space and then pull out of the space. <laughs> Especially ones as large as that, because I think that's just a matter of like competence. Um, but yeah, won't let that bother me. Um, but love a bit of road rage on the vlog. I don't know if you'll be able to hear what she said because my audio was still really loud, but she was literally like, summon, summon, you idiot. Um, you saw me coming, you idiot. <laughs> I was like, and I'm in my lane, I'm in my lane, leaving my house, in the street outside my house. Okay, anyway, on Eva, let's keep going. I do love where I live, the area is just absolutely stunning. Like, at the moment, I'm just driving past the river with all the swans and the ducks. But yeah, it's just gorgeous, isn't it? Absolutely stunning. finish the viewing um, the lady was so lovely bless her she was really nice complimented my coat as well said she very much liked the color that it suits suited me which is nice and um, oh my goodness kind of love that flat I mean the balcony wasn't the nicest it was like it was covered in bird poo which tells me you can't really sit out on it um, and it was right by the train station um, but I do love people watching and it weirdly wasn't that noisy I imagine it gets noisier depending on the time of day um, and it was just generally a nice like city view which I do like even though I am a country gal at heart like a much rather country view um, yeah I don't know that was just it was really spacey I feel like you could do so much with that space like especially the third bedroom that opens out into the living room I feel like that could be a really nice like office area or dining area then I could have a spare room um it is quite pricey but to be honest not as like for what it is I feel like that's super cheap <laughs> like for that to be a three bed and going for 1200 a month um which is you know more than I want to pay obviously but for a three bed like 
that could be at least like 1,800 for this for a city centre place. But I guess it's awkward because um, if you are going to have multiple people, it's only got one parking spot, um, and the parking down here is su is really tight. Like, and I don't know why I've just done that because I have to leave Cardiff anyway, or I'm supposed to be leaving Cardiff in a month to move. And honestly, like, it makes me want to cry. It makes me want to cry. I know I'm supposed to be like, oh yeah, new opportunities and those people keep saying oh, it's just for a year and it's, I don't know why, I don't like when people say it's just for a year, like, I know that a year is not long, but it's still like a significant portion of time, like, it's not like a week, a week, cool, yeah, yeah, whatever, but a year, especially, I always think of it as year 28 to 29, so I'll be turning 28 in September, and to me, that is a valuable year, you know, that's a valuable year, that's like youth, health <laughs> by god's grace you know i don't know yeah i don't know what i'm doing do you ever feel like you just don't know what you're doing with your life can i tell you something random i don't even know if i'm gonna put this in the vlog i actually applied to acting school <laughs> yesterday <laughs> i booked a viewing in cardiff i'm gonna cry this is how this is how i was much how much i was like this is not what i want to do in my life i don't want to do four months of acute medicine it's only four months sarah suck it up four months but I literally was like I just remembered my sister telling me that I should go to this acting school because I've always wanted to be an actress believe it or not I think I've got a very expressive face I think I'd be quite good at it I went to acting school as a child um, and I just feel like I'm, I'm wiser now I'd do better um, or I say I went to acting school I did a few lessons as a child and I feel like I'd do better especially now that they're actually like casting black families I remember auditioning for a family role in um, Doctor Who um, as the child, one of the daughters, and um, not getting it. And I remember being in the audition thinking, there's no way I'm getting this. They're just not, like, the main family is not going to be a black family. I just knew that. Like, I'm not mixed race, I'm black, and I, I just knew it wasn't going to be. Whereas now, now that the world is, like, <laughs> realising how non-inclusive the media has been, maybe there'll be more jobs. And this is quite an inclusive agency, and I just... I just paid £30 to apply yesterday on a whim and I'm waiting for them to send me the audition and it would start in September, it would be full time, it would cost me like £3,000 maybe or like £2,000. I remember thinking like for the opportunity that it is, it's not that expensive, like obviously it's expensive, it's as much as like my personal training course cost. But like for what it is, that's quite cool. And part of me just keeps thinking, what if I did that? What if I did this acting school? And what if they wanted to sign me? And what if I became an actor or an actress? Why do we not say actress anymore, by the way? Um, yeah, what if that all happened? Wouldn't that be amazing? <laughs> um, maybe I could move to London and live with my sister for a bit. Um, and then there's this other path of, oh, I could just do F2, work full time, apply for GP full time, settle down and... and and, there's, and that's an awesome option. I don't want to be ungrateful for that. That is such a blessing. Like, that is an awesome option. But it's like, how do you choose? How do you choose what you want to do in life? And also, there's the other option of doing the acting school, paying a load of money, not getting scouted, not being very good, not getting any job, and being back in square one. But, like, is that a bad thing? Because at least I'd know. At least I wouldn't be sat there at 40 like I should have been an actress. <laughs> And you're probably watching this thinking, Sarah, since when do you do any acting? Like, that's never been you. Um... But that is the, I'm just saying that to say that is the state that I've been in, in terms of like, how do people decide what to do with their life? There's so many options, so many opportunities. And it's like, how do I decide what to do? And it's a blessing. It's a good thing to have this, to be like, should I be a doctor or should I try and do something creative? Because as much as I love being a doctor, like there are so many aspects of me and my personality that aren't as allowed in medicine, like being spontaneous and creative and, and, and whatnot. Like I, I'm very good at what I do like honestly I'm smart I'm attentive I think that I this sounds really cocky but like I love working with patients I love being there for them I love being able to communicate with people um, in re yeah in those times being able to provide that service um, then I also think about the books I used to write when I was little and all the other creative outlets that Honestly, if medicine allowed you to do both, that would be great. If I could just be like, cool, I'm doing this part time and with no qualms, no issues. But you have to like prove you've got ill health or have a child to be able to do it part time. And also the pay would just be really, really low. Like, and I, I don't know what I'd be able to afford on that pay, um, on like part time pay. 
Lord help me, what do I do? Anyway, I'm running out of battery and I... I just got home from town um, <laughs> and I just I just have mixed feelings it was really good it was really productive I managed to upload one two three four videos with the internet with the Wi-Fi um, I did have to buy another coffee though and I genuinely was like shaking like I think I had too much caffeine so I sat there editing like you're fine Sarah you're not anxious at all it's fine two coffees within two hours it's fine for you i used to be able to drink a lot of coffee but i've limited it to one a day for a while now so buying two is not the best shout in fact i still feel a little bit oh, deep breath and breathe you know the wi-fi has been down at home for like 12 days now i thought i'd paid for six hours parking because i'd had the viewing and then i knew i was going to just sit down and bash out some work i thought i paid for six hours parking so I timed it well, got to the car 10 minutes before my ticket was about to expire and I find this bad boy. So you know when they say to increase how much, like increase the tariff or increase the fear? I obviously had pressed the button one too many times which had taken it back down from six hours to one hour. So I have a ticket and I'm so annoyed at myself. I'm so, so annoyed. <laughs> and I was like, I was it like, I went through all the options in my head of like, oh, maybe I can appeal. But appeal and say what? I really thought I paid for six hours. Like, mm, somehow I feel like that's not gonna fly. So I'm just gonna suck it up. And actually, if you pay within 14 days, it's 25 quid. So, you know, as much <laughs> as cutting as that is, to go from, you know, five pound 10 to 25 pounds, um, I'm just gonna pay the ticket. Pay the ticket and be okay with it. Um, but right now, I thought it'd be nice to make something to eat because I'm not even that hungry. I need to just sit down, breathe and process. I feel really like, <laughs> does that make sense? This is how I feel in vision, in visual form. <laughs> just too much coffee. Pasta that I love to use is spinach penny from Morrison. So I'm gonna boil some of that. So in the turkey stew there is mushrooms, peas, I think those are the only two vegetables. Looking very green, excited to dig in. this vlog is like be by myself <laughs> um, but I love my own company to be completely honest I, I genuinely love my own company I love 
obviously I love hanging out with friends as well but like I really enjoy the days that I just spend by myself. My housemates did get back from work about um, a couple of hours ago as well and I was just chatting to them in the kitchen telling one of my housemates about my indecisiveness in what I'm gonna do next in my life and she was super helpful just helped me talk through it and told me that her motto was that if she does something and she hates it she says to herself okay if I still hate it in three months I can quit. I think that's actually quite a good motto to use because um yeah, in terms of what I want to do next. Maybe I should just go for it, go for this job, even if it's not the rotations that I wanted, and then if it's terrible in three months, then I could quit. <sighs> yeah, it's just... Life is interesting. Um, anyway, I was just going to like do some laundry and tidy up. I've done a lot of laundry today in between vlogging um, and I'm really pleased about that. It's quarter past nine now, I'm going to get ready for bed and go to bed. I remembered that there were a few important emails that I needed to send, so I've just been sat down doing those. Nothing that fun. So I'm just going to tie my hair back and take my makeup off. Um, then I will, I think I will do the twisted curls. I quite like that today actually. I'll do the overnight weakness curls ready for tomorrow. I'll work tomorrow at 7 a.m. So yeah, I think I'm ready to go to bed. And um, to take my makeup off, I do use these um, face wipes, which are just so, so good. Like, it's one of those things since I switched a while ago, a few years ago now, it's like, oh my goodness, I can't believe I ever used anything else. Like, um, I don't massively love this cleanser. It's CeraVe Hydrating Cleanser. Um, it honestly, it's super hydrating, like it just feels like moisturiser, but sometimes I don't feel like it is. Look at that! My face. <laughs> sometimes I just don't feel like it is the best, but hey ho, it'll do. That's the thing about me with skincare, like, it takes a lot for me not to finish a product. <laughs> like most products I will finish, just because I want to give them a fair go. But, yeah, don't love this one. I could be wrapped around your arms instead of being lonely. We could be gazing at the stars, but now it feels just like I wandered off into a room and closed the door behind me. I never gave the key to you, even though I wanted to. something new but now my body's aching i'm tired of dwelling in the dark it's just that my heart can't take it i didn't know what it would cost me when i let you go i feel alone and i'm just singing mm, mm, mm. it should have been you another time another place i just know mm, it could have been you what a crime and what a shame to let go Sometimes I just don't know what to do It should have been you And on that note, I think I'm going to end the video and go to bed. Um, thank you so much for sharing my day with me. I really enjoy sharing life with you guys on this channel or at least sharing little bits of my life uh, with you on this channel. Um, yeah, if you want to see more videos like this or if you have any other video requests, then let me know in the comments. And until then, I will see you soon. Bye! <laughs>